my first question is, you've been uh, had this ownership journey now for a couple of months at least. What's the reaction been like in the US and for people you know there? That's, I know that's your main goal is to put eyes on Burnley. Yes. Have you put eyes on Burnley yet? What's the reaction been? I would say the reaction is better than I expected it to mm -hmm. be. Um, you never really know, you know, I mean, try and explain to people where Burnley is, what it is. Um, but you don't know until you start. And I think the reaction has been incredible from friends and family supporting to uh, our fans supporting to just the general population at wanting to know more, wanting to ask more. I mean, people posting their jerseys and people posting their hats and t-shirts and everybody asking today, how do we watch the match? Where do we, where do we watch? It's, it's gonna be a long process to get it where we want it to be, but I would say the start has been better than we could have expected. Yeah, for some people in America, some of our friends and family, they don't even know how the Premier League works and the championship. And so it really was an education process of showing them and telling them how it works. And it's been incredible to see how excited they are, how many will be watching the game tonight. And like JJ said, they want gear, they want the hats. So it, it's been an incredible response. And when they ask, like, what's Burnley like? What do you say? What do you tell them? We tell them the truth. We tell them it's a very small, hard-working town. It's an old mill town. Um, they've been through some tough times. They've, they've had their adversity, but it's made them stronger, and they're a very tight-knit community. Uh, and most importantly of all, they love their club. They live and die with their club every single week. Um, I'm from Wisconsin, so the Green Bay Packers have a fan base that lives and die with the Green Bay Packers every week. So I kind of explain it to people like that. Like it's a, and the Green Bay is a very small town. so. I just say it's a place you would love and uh, hopefully you can make it there someday. Yeah, and one thing we were really struck by when we came here was how beautiful the town is. We, we love just walking around and seeing how pretty it is and we always explain to people, you just see Burnley kits everywhere. And, and like JJ said, that's common in Green Bay, but not all American sports cities are like that. And so that's something we love about here. One big thing I've heard you both talk about is gaining the trust of these fans and any football fans. but. Burnley's Burnley fans and this tribalism. How do you think you've done that so far? And if you have done that so far, and how are you going to do it? Yeah, I think it's a long journey. I don't think it's something that happens overnight. I think you do it by showing that you are truly trying to understand, respect, and honor their history and their tradition. This club's been around for over 140 years. Um, that's a ton of history and a ton of memories, high and low, that these people have been through. We're just coming in on that. We're not gonna pretend like we were here for the entire process. But what we can do is show that we do care, show that we do wanna learn about it, and show that when we are speaking about Burnley to the rest of the world, we're speaking what they would want the world to know, not what we think they would want the world to know. Yeah, one thing JJ said a lot is, just talking to the fans and asking them and, and learning from them um, and trying to gain their trust that way. Whenever we've been at the pubs or in, in town, we, we just like to talk to fans and, and hear their experience. And I think that's the best way to learn. What is the, if there's one question that Burnley fans, I know you've met a lot now, what's the one thing they ask you most? I, I know my answer, do you know your, my? Mine, I think, is like, why Burnley? Like, why did you do this? How did you even find Burnley? I think that's the biggest Mine one. is similar, but they always ask, how are you finding Burnley? They really want, yeah. they're really proud of their town, and they really yes. want us to be enjoying our time here, mm -hmm. which to me was surprising, because I, I always assumed that they would be very hesitant to welcome us. But the way that they just want us to feel welcome here, and the way that they just want us to make sure we're enjoying our time here, that, that surprised me, and I think it speaks to the type of people that live here. And uh, I know you're retired. Keith, if I'm right, you're like semi... I'm retired. You're retired, you're retired, yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, you're both in these sort of phases in your life now where things are changing, and you're, you've become parents. I know you're doing the CBS analyst mm -hmm. thing. Where does Burnley fit in with all that, like day-to-day, -day, like if I was, if I was <laughs> like a little spy around your house? Yeah. Like, are you checking emails yeah. for two hours in the morning? Burnley stuff like what what does that look like? She is working very hard I think the hats and you work very hard on the hats and and he really wants to be as involved as possible from America I mean it's hard that we're not here all the time but um, yeah you're there's, very not a, involved. there's not a single day in the household that Burnley's not spoken about emailed about calls about um, whether it's working on the hats or it's working with Alan on something or it's a Zoom call with Vince and the staff. There's all sorts of different things going on. Um, she probably thinks I'm a little over-involved and some of the people at the club probably think I'm a little over-involved, <laughs> but uh, 
No. That's what we, when we signed on, when we were talking to Alan in the very beginning, I said, how involved can we be? And he said, as involved as you possibly want to be. Um, and it's been incredible. Well, um, one of the things I was interested in is that when you spoke to Vince company, yeah. that you were talking about your sort of careers as athletes and this very different knowledge base that you both have. Yeah. And I, I know you're a soccer player, Keely, yes. so it wouldn't, yes. there's not that quite a difference, yes. I guess. But for you, JJ, what could the Premier League learn from the NFL, do you think? That's a great question. I mean, yeah, no, that's a great question. I think there's there's certainly things on both sides that we can learn from each other. I think that the Premier League does an incredible job of preserving their history and past and the tribalism and the, the fan bases, the supporter bases. I think that that, and also the, the game day atmosphere, you know, it's it's different. There's not the the cheerleaders, there's not the, you know, the huge video screens playing commercials between every kick of the ball. Um, they really have preserved the the game and the history of it i think we can learn that over there i think over here um it, it's it's hard because i would say you could almost go a little bit of the opposite like you could find ways to work some of that in as well but you don't want to you don't want to do anything to take away from the integrity of the game so you don't work a lot of that in um the thing that vince and i talk about the most is actual tactics like we we talk about you know different types of defenses and how offenses attack things or how meetings are done or how nutrition and uh, I think that that's one thing that we do really well over there is, is the recovery, the nutrition, all of that but we also learn a ton from Europe so they're, they're both the best leagues in the world for a reason. And I've, I've watched everything you've done before and you always talk about putting eyes on Burnley, you want to put eyes on Burnley yeah. and I love that but I wonder like what does success look like for you? Like is there anything in mind where you want that to happen, you want this many eyes, or like the feeling of when you go to America, people talk about that. What, is, what does success mean for you in this sort of venture? It's a, really, a really good question. Yeah. We do talk about that a lot. Like at the end of this, what do we want to happen? How can you measure? Um, yeah. I don't, think, I don't think there's a quantitative measure, and I also think that no matter what anybody does off the pitch, and Vince speaks about this all the time, at the end of the day, Premier League football or European football in general, is about what happens on the pitch. So we can do everything that we possibly can, Alan can do everything he possibly can, but at the end of the day, if you don't have success on the pitch, it's not gonna matter. So for us, I think we wanna see success on the pitch and however we can help that, but then when we do have that, it's amplifying that, and it's being able to walk around anywhere in America or anywhere in the world with a Burnley cap on or a Burnley shirt on, and people say, oh, up to Clarence, that's what I want. I want people to recognize it without us having to explain it. And you're not the first athletes to invest in, uh, or American celebrities at least, in many things, um, to invest in British uh, football clubs. Tom Brady was the latest one, so I imagine you know well. Um, you're sort of putting eyes on Burnley. His plan is to put eyes on Birmingham. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Does that make it harder for you to do? But Opposite. I think, it, I think it helps um, because it's, A, it's competition. We're, we're competitive at the end of the day, uh, so it's going to make us both want to do more. Um, but B, I think overall the American fan base has a massive appetite for football right now. Uh, mm -hmm. Obviously, Ryan Reynolds and Rob and Wrexham, obviously Ted Lasso, you see what Tom's doing with Birmingham City. America is craving football content. Um, but they really, there's a large group of people that still don't have a great knowledge base. Mm -hmm. um, so they're still trying to find their squad, they're still trying to find who they're supposed to support. I think it helps us a lot that the more eyeballs come over, we just direct those eyeballs up to <laughs> Lancashire. Um, when Tom did that, did he speak to you at all as someone who had just done it? Or was it his own thing? Um, it's his own thing. I mean, I've, we've known about it for a while. Um, we've, known, we've known what's been going on, but um, we've spoken about it now. and. I'm excited for him. I'm happy for him. I think it's going to be a great challenge. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm happy they're in a different league so I can actually root for him a little bit and want him to come join us. But uh, if they ever make it up and we're in the same league, it'll be a lot of fun. If you're in the same league, you can take that rivalry off the pitch as well as you used to have on it. Yes. Yeah. I would, uh, he's, he's had a whole lot of success in his career <laughs> on a different kind of pitch. Um, but in this one, I like our odds. And just on Burnley, the place itself, you've touched on before how, how old it is, the history, the culture around here. What's the one thing that I think has maybe surprised you the most or you didn't expect it to be like when you first got touched down? I, I think yeah. a few things. One thing I think is how beautiful it was. Mm -hmm. we, we heard it was such a hard-working town and, and a mill town and 
we came and were just struck by it. It is so pretty and you can just look out in the hills and I think that was one thing we were surprised about. Yeah, people definitely, when we were learning about Burnley in the process before we had come, people kind of said, why would you want to go to Burnley? Like, what's there to see in Burnley? I mean, it's a beautiful countryside. It really is. I mean, it's, I think it's a beautiful place. That surprised us. And then just the kindness and generosity of the people. Every person you talk to is just so caring and wants to help each other out. I mean, I, I truly feel like if you have a flat tire, somebody's going to come out of their house and help you to fix it. And just lastly, I read that really struck me is that when learning about Burnley, the place, you'd gone into like real depth about the club. Like yeah. I'll, I'll watch that YouTube video of 1987. <laughs> yeah. Football yes. League. Yeah, the Orient. What, yeah. what was the extent? I know about that. What was the extent of your other research into the club been? Like how how deep how deep have you got? <laughs> we, <laughs> we were deep. We were on you. We found every video you could possibly find on YouTube. We even said like, should we go find books to like read yeah. about this club? Yeah, there's pretty like, much anything on the yeah. internet about Burnley we have read and seen. There's like a guy on YouTube that walks around <laughs> just with a video camera, and all he does is he just walks around the whole city or the whole town. Sorry, don't call it a city. That's, <laughs> that's a big no-no. I've learned that. That's a big difference, but he just walks around with a video camera and videos the whole town. We watched this like 25 minute video, this guy walking around Burnley yeah. with a camera. I mean, we read about the history and Jimmy McElroy and, you know, the cricket stand and all these different things. Just because that's how you, that's, if you don't know what's important to these people, you can't support them the right way. So we have a lot to learn. We're not even close yet, but uh, today I'm, I think we're going to try a Hafner's pie, which is a very important thing to Burnley fans. So I'm very excited to try that. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.